Your style, my style, freestyle. Because he's all the way from America, the United States, and he's a poet, he's a composer, he's a songwriter, with a very, very powerful message. And so is his voice. So let's take a listen now to um, a tribute that he did to Malcolm. And he's talking about, I take the blame. But looking at the gentleman, the elder in front of me, is wearing a beautiful African attire. And being a man from Sierra Leone, I could describe it as a Ronco dress. The one from the northern part of the country, mostly like from the Limbers or the Timinis. But he's wearing a Ronco attire. And I myself am wearing a short sleeve Ronco. And he's wearing the full length with a beautiful African art on. And I'm still wearing the same. But here we are. He's looking just like me. He's got a whole lot of talent with him today and a wisdom for us here. And if I'm not really saying anything truthful, I will take the blame. Now let's take a listen now to his track. But he's on a trail for African liberation. I take the blame. I take the blame rather than leaving me shame. I take the blame. I take the blame rather than leaving me shame. I take the blame as long as my people is free. Okay, I'm not Cause and your fans will take the blame. And with their plans that take the blame And in form of degree to a mentish they aim But he breathes His ambition was flawless in the past of light And the community appears inside Texas does people tender and dark People to protect and defend their rights. Let's get it right. The sister is called African Sensation. How about that? So, so true as well. I take the such an inspirational figure very very proud to have him here in the galaxy house he's not a stranger of course he has been here before a few months ago with our very own Dr. Abu Ratata. Maybe you missed that because you're working. A very rare opportunity for us to have him here. That was I Take the Blame. Now, this is a link I've played it before. And many of you inquired, who is that? Well, it's right here with me this afternoon, Noel Morgan, Voice of Force. This is The Link. The Link. Pay attention. No just swinging left to right. Our Voice of Force is in the house. Separation. No chance going into aspiration. Generations, 
The Link, what a powerful track. Welcome to Galaxy this Saturday afternoon, Saturday 23rd day in January 2016. Thanks and greetings, my brother. Um, thanks for welcoming me back in the office of Info, Cultural Information, Galaxy. I'm glad to be here. The Link, yes, um, we got to have a link. And the inspiration behind the link was I went to Ghana somewhere around 1990. Mm -hmm. And there was a sister in the kitchen cooking. Right. And there was a Peter Tosh record, Equal Rights and Justice. Uh huh. And the sister sang the song so profound. Right. And I said, there's a link. Because, you know, African people always think that because one is in Africa and one is in the Caribbean or United States, we're different people. Mm -hmm. You know, we always think we're different. Mm -hmm. And when I hear it, I say, we have a connection. Right. The link. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the link. And, and all of your songs are so powerful because they've got the message. And the message is about your life experience and how it's transformed. Um, for people who are uh, for the first time, because they've heard your music here on Galaxy, not the first time at all, but for majority of people listening now, probably for the first time. So tell them, who is Noel Morgan? Well, Noel Morgan was born um, in Jamaica, a little town called Falmouth, on the north coast. And um, I guess maybe because um, I was going to the movie a lot, and um, ships used to come to my port for cargo, mainly sugar and rum. Okay. You know, so I started to make connection with black people like myself mm -hmm. during my boy child. I'm talking 12, 13, 14. Right. You know, so um, the inspiration to grass was black people becomes easy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the movie and I see things like Taz and, mm -hmm. you know, I always feel more towards the suffering African people. Mm -hmm. It looks like me, yeah. first of all. So um, ever since that, I was always searching. I came to England back in the 60s and um, I started to grow even more. How old were you then when you came to England? I was 18. Right. 18 years old. And um, I started to see the growth of my people. I started to meet one of my people here from the different walks of you know, the diaspora, also continent Africa. Yes. And I, I feel vibrations from many African people from all over. I mean, there was a lot of negativity among us, really, but I, I could feel Africanness among me as with African people from every part, Nigeria, Ghana, you know, um, Trinidad, Barbados, so on, so forth and so forth. And I keep growing, I keep growing. Because I could see um, inequality here also in regards to black and white in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, um, racial little petty conflicts. And I started to grow from that and then I started to write. Right. I just started to write in regards to our people. I turned in poetry. Oh, poetry right. form, you know, it's just a, it's still a book. Mm -hmm. It's still a book. And I started to write from cultural experiences among people. And, the love that I want to build mm -hmm. among African people, right. from my experience to your experience and everybody else's experience, let's put them together right. and we can build the unity we see. So that drive that started as a young man going through into the sheeps and um, seeing um, uh, a people who look like you must have come from an educational knowledge that you have been told about yourself and the people who look like you. Is that right? Yes, um, you know, I remember some older people and um, some of the stories they tell. So from that, you, you've been gathering that some things out there that we need to grasp. Them. Mm -hmm. You know, older men, I used to be in a company, older men, and even I was age 15, they said, I'm acting like I'm 50. <laughs> but you know, there was this urge to know, and you know, we call, we call them the griot. We didn't know they were the griot at the time. We just see them in our community as telling a story. But from there you gather, you keep gathering, you keep wanting to know more. And then I used to love to go to the library. Right. I used to go, to, because the library was a cool place in you know, Jamaica, an art country. Yeah. And the library was sitting in a cool part by the ocean. Right. So I used to go there and read. And I started to get newspaper, like from England, you used to have a, uh, a newspaper near the mirror. Right. You used to come to the libraries in yes, Jamaica, yes. I used to read from the mirror. Mm -hmm. Then you have books coming from the United States, like Ebony, mm -hmm. Jet, Tan, 
and these magazines start to learn of what's going on with our people and what's going on around the world and then I go to the movie. I mean it's fictional but as I said from um, the, the art mm -hmm. is reflection. Right. True reflection. So yes. you get a lot you learn a lot from the movie yes. and things like that. And then meeting people who really know the story can tell you the story that you can embrace the story. It must be really hard for a young man at that time because it's not the norm at all. What you've just explained to us here is not the norm. So you have to go search for those things in order to reclaim, to understand the road, not just, um, you know, the Jamaicans have played, but in relation to exactly where they're coming from. So it's not a norm. But that must be really, really, really hard at that time for you as a young man trying to search. Well, I wouldn't say it was hard because of the fact that and I feel the story. I feel what it is. Mm -hmm. So it, what is a lot of work. Let's put it that way. Not hard, but a lot of work. A lot of work. Because I feel the story. Mm -hmm. So when you go to grasp the story, it's easy for you to take it. Because that's what you're looking for. You're getting it. Mm -hmm. And you, you get it from different different sources. Right. Different people you meet. So I would say it's hard work. Right. And you, sometimes you neglect a lot of it. For instance, um, I remember when I was here, sometimes they said, um, you want some overtime? On the build, I was on construction, the building side. Uh -huh. Say, so, um, you want some more time? And I know Saturday might be time and a half, yeah. or Sunday might be double. double. But I have something cultural to go in here. Somebody go, maybe Hyde Park used to go to Speaker's Corner. Mm -hmm. And um, I met a brother, very, very, very renowned brother, Walter Rodney. Rodney. Okay. What, you know, wrote um, Europe and Africa. I met him here in England, and he used to go to his home mm -hmm. every Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, to get some lessons about Africa and so over time and all that thing didn't mean nothing because I think there was something more important than maybe a few more dollars or pound in the pocket. Right. It was not. It was hard work. It was hard work. And that some sacrifices. Yes. I mean, talking about the sacrifices, I mean, like we're talking about, because back in the, in the days in Jamaica, even at work yesterday, I was talking to a brother of mine and he was saying that uh, the knowledge that he as um, you know he got back in the days in, in Jamaica was that um, African people sold them <laughs> you know um, like Jamaicans were the the troublesome and I thought well have you seen the Zulus have you heard about the Zulus have you heard about the, the Congolese people yeah. <laughs> you know I mean you know every nation have those people so you know there are people who still carry that burden you know of interpretation of what has been done to us in the past so growing up with your fellow um brothers and sisters there you know how what was the what what, what would you have to go through in order because it was not the norm i'm sure because you have to go to library and enough time i've spoken to a lot of people i mean they never mentioned going into libraries especially yeah. from jamaica yeah. so that it was not something that was normal but then you talk about challenges. I mean, were there were there challenges in, in your path at that time where you were learning and understanding about the connection to Africa? Yes, there were challenges because um, you know, as you said in Jamaica, you have, I know people used to laugh. I remember during um, South Africa, the apartheid time in the early fifties. I think it was Vasta or one of them. World leader. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember some of my brothers they were laughing that the Africans were throwing spear at the, at the European and all this little nonsense, you know? <laughs> so we go through that and it's sad, like for instance, it's sad, say African people sold each other you know, and um, they got to really do some really good research in, in African history. But let me say this, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I hear this, mm -hmm. the white man takes my language, the white man enslaved me, the white man do this. Today, when we start talking about reparation, then we start here a reverse, mm -hmm. that we start to sell each other. Mm -hmm. And it's a game been playing. Mm -hmm. And African people got to be smarter and wiser. Right. To cipher these things than to go to, you sold, you sold me too. Yeah. Because African people is started to say, yes, we have accomplices. Yes, yes. We must have accomplices, otherwise you wouldn't yes. be so rigid. Yes. But we didn't start the slavery. It's not intentional. Trade. Definitely. It wasn't right. intentional. We didn't start the slavery. So these things, they use these things mm -hmm. to reverse on us. Right. Because, you see, everybody in the world get reparation mm -hmm. except the African man. Right. And there's reasons for that. Mm. Because, um, personally, me, I think if we get reparations as a people and we, 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 we rebuild Africa, mm. there'll be some problems among other people. 
Well, let's go over now to your track from one for all and all for one. And this is the big question. What are we going to do? So Noel Morgan, what a track. What are we going to do? Josephine Ajay, the African sensation. Yes. I wrote that piece for her. I told her I wanted to sing that piece. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we talk about our children and they are our future, and then if they are our future, we got to work towards making it so. You know, for instance, you hear African people around the world said, when I was that child and that child, I could go on the street and someone could walk me and send me home and all. Well, if we all know that, and we all have gone through that, we have to start practicing it all over and all over again. We have to start, remember, we take the village to make the child. Because I've experienced that. Yes. We were, um, I couldn't go wrong in front of anybody that is older than I. Yes. And um, I'll get a hope. And a lot of African people express that. Well, I tell you what, I mean, that's a very, very good point. Um, like, everything else has been a struggle for everybody. And, and I think that is a big, big struggle because back in the days, we used to look up. You know, we look straight ahead. You know, we don't have a distraction of looking on our mobile phones and our set all the time because this is what you see nowadays. People are walking and they're looking down on their phones. Sometimes, you know, hitting somebody or hitting a car or a car hit you or whatever. Yeah. You know, so if, you, if, if you're looking at your phone, definitely you're going to miss the child if they're doing something wrong. Definitely. And if they're doing something wrong, you do see them, and you're concentrating on sending messages on your phone. Definitely. So is that how difficult we're faced with these days? You see, um, the things we do, if it's morally correct, mm -hmm. And our children doing it, they must pay attention that they're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it, it's, it's a process of growth. And they're going to grow, and you must grow with them. Whatever you're doing, as long as it's morally con correct, yeah. you must pay attention to your child mm. if you want them to be what you think they should be. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. I mean, I've been in a bus, you know, recently where uh, I've seen a young, you know, he probably was about five, and he's got a mobile phone. I mean, this you see all the time. Yeah. And he was um, on his mobile phone, so is his parents on the mobile phone. Yeah. And, you know, he's playing with it, and the parents are saying, oh, we're going to get down now. And it's like, I'm on my phone. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we're going to get down now. It's like, the boy's not paying attention. Right. You know, and, and this is the problem. It's a new kind of uh, moral problem we're faced with, isn't it? Because the moral, I mean, the mobile phone, now they're actually looking at it as a moral social problem. Right, it is. And um, as again, it's, so, um, it's only going to correct yourself because today it's this kind of technology taking over. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you use a little phone to maybe appease a little child. But if you're going to let them use it, then you must pay attention. Mm -hmm. And the child must know when you said yes, it's mean yes. When it's no, it's mean that. No. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of what we're going to construct what we're doing. Because it's, a, as I say, it's a process of growth. And what, what's happening, you're always living to what we are going through. Some of it is really distraction. And we must know what is distraction. And are we gonna abandon distraction? Right. But we, we're in a world where it's going like this. So we try to move it to exist. Mm -hmm. we, are, we must be morally strong in whatever we're doing. We must know what to reject, what to accept. Well, you know, not, nothing wrong with technology, but sometimes they're overstepping it. Yes. It's far ahead. Yes. And it have no moral basis. It does nothing to humankind. And that's the one we don't want to have nothing to do with. But the one that's going to move us ahead with time. Mm -hmm. Because, let's sort of say, inventing. Yeah. The reason African people invent so much things during the days of slavery was because they were moving time, they were making things a bit easier for them. Mm -hmm. They were really working for them. Yeah. So that is what we have to do. Whatever in technology is good for us, mm -hmm. accept it. Well, forget about it. Just leave, leave. Like me, I, don't, I have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And there's much of it I don't really know because I basically use, well, hello, mm -hmm. I'm here, and, yeah. and send messages, nothing more. I don't know. Somebody uh, maybe can I send a photograph to a friend. And this, and this. I mean, you were saying earlier on that you are a young man to technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, very, I, really very I really enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> very young man technology. So, you know, so I use what I know is important. The yeah. rest can stay where it's at. You know, it's funny because I was saying earlier on when I started a show that um, these days, you know, you go into every houses or most houses. And the first thing you glance at is a, is a plasma screen. You know, whereby back in the days when you go into a home, the first thing you'll see is a dining table. Yeah, yeah. So you see how times have moved. And you know, if you don't have a plasma in your house and people come in your house, it's like, what? 
what something is missing here <laughs> and um but you can find that in freestyle house anyway no plasma <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know a TV house. I know a TV mouse. Not at all. No, you know, no, you got to no. find music more than anything yeah, else. Know you know. But you mentioned earlier on about um, a, a book, a poem that you started writing back in the days. And could you um, want to tell us how I want to say, do you remember the first poem you ever wrote? Yes, um, I remember the first one I ever wrote. Um, it was back in 1965. And we was doing a commemorative in Peckhamir for mm -hmm. um, Paul Bogle, right. the Moran Bay Rebellion, mm -hmm. which was uh, the 100 year anniversary. Right. So we tried to do a program here in Peckham, mm -hmm. and I wrote a piece named Fight, right. and I uh, used from the F to the T, mm -hmm. and frame them out, what fight really means right. in regards to our people. And then um, I periodically I write different kind of poetry until um, I think 1982 is I was invited to a Kwanzaa program mm -hmm. back in um, New Jersey, mm -hmm. a place called East Orange. All right. And unfortunately, I couldn't have attended. So some of my colleagues went, and the next morning was asking one of the sister, you know, what the program was about. And, you know, she said it was a nice Kwanzaa program. Mm -hmm. A young sister tried to write something about Malcolm, because I love Malcolm. I love what Malcolm said. Mm -hmm. And she said he, the poem wasn't that good in regards to Malcolm, writing about Malcolm. So I, I felt it right there and I sat there and I wrote a poem named Alone, mm -hmm. 1982. Mm -hmm. And from then on I just keep writing sometimes three, four poems a night. Mm -hmm. You know, just looking at it because you, you know, what is happening out here, you can write from it every second. Mm -hmm. If you think about liberation, unity and love of African people, every second you can write something by it. Um, being out there and experiencing things. Right. So I write on that level. You can go on the bus and you just go on the bus and something transpired. And you can just start. I start a right. Right. Because I pick from it. Well, let's take a track now. Um, it's on your album called Revolution. And I think you're talking about the first poem you've ri written um, called Fight. Um, but there's a thing here. I'm not sure whether it's the track because we've got um, eight tracks on the LP and it's showing on the System 7. So we, I'm going to press the knob, um, the button, and you tell me whether it's fight. That wasn't the lyrics, but it's fight. But that wasn't the exact lyrics. Right. Well, we're going to take a listen now to Fight from the album Revolution from my special guest here, Noel Morgan.